Hello students, I am teacher Thaddeus Mbaluka and today I'm teaching you chemistry form 4. Our topic of interest today is reaction rates and reversible reactions. Our subtopic today is reaction rates. Welcome. We'll start by looking at the lesson objectives and by the end of the lesson, the learner should be able to define the rate of reaction, draw a setup that is used to measure the rate of reaction, explain the effects of concentration and temperature on the rate of a reaction. Now let's start by looking at what is the rate of reaction. And a rate of reaction is a measure of how much how much of reactants are consumed or how much of products are formed by unit time. And that one can be represented, whatever you're talking about now, as you should see in there, we have the rate is equal to change in the amount of the product or other reactants over the time taken. So we are looking at how much of the reactants are consumed or how much of the product is consumed by unit time that is what we define as the reaction rate or rather the reaction the, the reaction rate now let's look at now the apparatus the apparatus that are used to determine the rate of reaction we need a graduated sewage we need a stopwatch and we need a conical plus or rather what you call the reaction vessel and an electronic beam balance. Let's demonstrate that one using diagrams. And the first diagram is now measuring now. We are now reacting, for instance, we are having magnesium ribbon, reacting with hydrochloric acid here, and we are using a syringe. So here, this kind of a reaction, we want to measure how much of the gas is produced per unit time. And that's why you are seeing there is a stopwatch. You cannot talk about rate of reaction without a stopwatch. So in this kind of a scenario, we are looking at now how much of the product is produced. And in this kind of a scenario, the syringe must be graduated so that it can be able to measure volume. If it is not graduated, it cannot measure volume. Let's look at another scenario. We are having now here, we don't have a syringe, but we are having calcium carbonate reacting with hydrochloric acid here. We are having a beam balance here. What is the role of the, this beam balance? For instance, here, we are reacting calcium carbonate and hydrochloric acid. So we are, we are, now, we are now using the calcium carbonate react with HCl, and now we are looking at now how much grams of calcium carbonate are being consumed per unit time. And that's why we are using a, a weighing balance, rather a beam balance. So you can use a beam balance to calculate or rather to measure the change in mass per unit time. But a, a stopwatch must be there. So now we look at now the factors affecting the rate of reaction. The rate of a reaction can be altered by several physical factors. And the effect of these factors can be explained in terms of collision theory. And what is this collision theory? For a reaction to take place, the particles, even if it is now a particle, another particle, these are atoms of an element that are reacting, the particles have to collide. And once they collide, they are able to react to form a compound. When particles collide and the collision leads to formation of a product that is what you call a fruitful or rather effective or rather successful collisions. When collisions lead to a reaction. But not all collisions are fruitful. Not all collisions will lead to formation of a product. So that's why we are saying the rate of reaction can be explained in terms of collision theory.